Uh, before I get the moderated. I gotta fix the tire on this bike. I have no idea what's causing the slow leak, but we're gonna find out. Uh, find out why it has a slow leak. Does it make sense? I just patched it a few days ago and it keeps going low and I don't know why so we're gonna figure out we're gonna have to take it all back apart and figure out why it's got a slow leak on it okay first things first snip the wire tie Even though I got the chain tensioner on there, the chain has jumped a couple times, hitting hard bumps. But if you go on the trails really hard, it'll still jump. So I started using a wire tie to help the tensioner. Tensioner holds it really good, but uh, if you hit really hard stuff, it will uh, uh, jump off. Okay, when you're doing the Sturmy Archers, make sure you shift in the third gear when you do them. So you have slack in this uh, chain here. Loosen uh, the, this little lock nut up and then just unscrew it. And that's my cat, Ham Ham. He's just a big baby. And unscrew the shift rod. Now we need 15 millimeter, which should be on my torque wrench. Yep, there it is. Now on this bike, it's a little tougher. On this bike, this bike opening on the rear is really way too big for uh, the Sturmy Archer uh, hub because the Sturmy Archer hub is only 170 millimeter overall length is 190 overall length but it happens to be on this DK bicycle it's 210 millimeters. So you got 190, and then you got uh, 210 millimeter overall width on this, on the dropouts. I think got acorn nuts about had it. What about this one? No, this one's good. Yeah. Yeah, this one's good. That's that. Then release the pressure. And you'll see it jump. You see? <laughs> it just jumps. It's got so much tension on it from uh, because it's so wide on it uh, the washer bounced somewhere I think that's it no the washer bounced somewhere there it is these washers don't lose them they act like a, a torque arm they keep the axle from spinning so uh, clamp out and just pull the wheel out 
now is the fun part. Move this out of the way. Right here. Always try to do the disc down so you don't get all your fingerprints all over it. <clears throat> the valve stem. This tire has uh, slime in it. That's why I think it won't go completely flat. I think the slime is plugging the hole. That's why I think it just won't go completely flat. But this is a four inch wheel. So changing the tire on this one, it's quite easy. Let's go right around. No lube or anything needed because it's it's a four inch wheel. It just slides right off. But they can be a pain in the butt to seat the beads because the wheel even though it's a four inch tire and a four inch wheel is because of the type of tire it is these are Kevlar sidewalls and they're uh, like okay you know uh, what do you call um they flex a lot so seating the bead can be a pain in the butt because once you start inflating it the bead wants to like kind of pop out on one side. So let's see. Uh, remember, don't pull the tube completely out the first time round. Just pull it out to where you need it, like this here. Because what you want to do is you want to mark the tire and the tube for the location. So when you inflate the tube, you can see where it's leaking and possibly find the spot on the tire where, you know, something... I've had uh, a microscopic piece of cable. I mean, we're talking... You can't. You couldn't see it with the naked eye. You actually had to feel for it, and it was so minute that I had a tire go flat after a few days. And I could not. It took me the longest time to figure out what was going on. And every time I took it apart, because of the slime that's in the tire, it wouldn't leak when I inflated the tire. The slime, and it wouldn't show up on the slime to where. It would, uh, so, you know, show the hole. So, here's what I do now. I just lay the tube on top of the tire. Just the way I pulled it out. Without moving it around too much. Then I mark the top of the tube and the top of the tire. So, if I lose my orientation... Uh, it's easy to tell. Okay, now my air pressure. Where's my air nozzle? Oh, there it is. See that tube that I inflated yesterday? And it kept on going flat. And I still not, don't know where the hole is in it. See, that's one of those type of tubes you. I don't, and there's not even any slime in that tube. I just can't figure out why it's doing what it's doing. It'll go flat uh, in a day or two, but I can't find any holes in it. I even changed the valve stem, valve gut out. And it's still nothing. Okay. Here, we're going to inflate this one. 
This one has slime in it, so I don't know if the air is going to push the slime out to a hole. That's the benefit of slime. Okay? See, now I see where the hole's at. Now. Okay, my orientation, this is where it's benefit the orientation of, of the tire in the tube. So that gives me an idea of where to look. Something stuck in the tire to poke that really small hole. So that means there's got to be something right here. Okay, where's that hole? Okay, it's lined up where it marks. So it's got to be right in there. It's got to be something right here. That's... So that's got to be right in here somewhere. I don't see anything. Uh -oh. Okay, maybe. Maybe something there. Okay, what is that? Yep. There we go. There you go. Right there. Right there. That. That there. That's what was poking the tire. Just sharp enough. And it's in the exact spot, too. Just enough to poke through the carcass. Wow. Okay. Time to patch it. Time to patch it. Now, I still use the benefit of the slime is when you're out and about uh, it, it'll kind of patch the hole temporarily there's still air coming out of it even though the slime is there but the benefit of it uh, is the your tire won't go completely flat when you're out and about it, it gives you enough of a warning to where you can get home so, you know, that, that's the benefit of the slime. I went and bought some more slime at Home Depot. Uh, no, slime does not sponsor this video of any kind. It's just I've tried different types, and it seemed to be the slime worked the best. When it came to the... When it came, came to these... Uh, Sealants. Okay. Okay, here's my valve. Uh -oh. Okay. Lost the hole. Okay. Oh, no, it's on this side here. It's on this side. Uh, there it is. Here's the hole. Slime can be a pain in the butt sometimes, especially when you're cleaning it and stuff. It can be. <laughs> it can be a pain in the butt. But it's pretty good, especially when you need to patch a tire. Especially when you need to actually patch it. I just, uh, I know. This, uh... What I do is I did, uh, do this first.
Make sure there's no oil residue. All this is is electrical contact cleaner. It's like basically 99.9% uh, what do you call it? Alcohol, you know, the regular alcohol that you have at the house. I just clean it with that and sand it down then apply the patch. And apply the patch to it. Okay. Where's my chop? So I don't overplug the hole. There's a hole. There's a hole. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Put a little dot right there. There. That way. Scratch it in both directions, though, to make sure you got good volcanism on the patch that you're putting on. I guess I'm old school. They say you don't have to heat the glue. The vulcanizing cement. But I'm old school. I still do it. Okay, here. Take this stuff. Put a dab right in the middle. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything left in this one? Should be a little bit in there. Luckily, I bought extras. There's that, and then just circle around. Make sure you have plenty on there. I use that chalk there's a little teeny white dot right where the hole's at that helps me from uh, uh, put keeps me from putting a patch in the wrong spot I'm old school so this is the way I was taught and it still seems to work quite well. Then after you heat it up and you put your patch on. There. You can use anything. I used to have one of those little wheels but I can't find it anymore. I lost it somewhere. But all you basically need to do is, like, roll it around the edges, or all the way around the edges. Basically, what you want to try to do is get the bubbles out of the middle of the patch, the air bubbles. Because, you know, when you put the patch on, there's possibly air bubbles on it. So, that's why you roll it all the way around. If you had one of those little rolly, rolly things, I can't remember what they're called, but it's used for you know, you know, patching tires and all kinds of stuff. It's a different type than using uh, the type for the screen doors, though. The screen doors are more like uh, blades. I gotta get me another one of those because these make it so easy. 
rather than you know doing it this way with the back base of a lighter. <laughs> but it does work though. And then approximately a few minutes at most, this will be completely cured. Sure, all air bubbles are out of it. There we go. And that's that for now. Now, what I usually do, give it a minute or two, put the valve stem back in. Well, you don't have to, really. I like to tr uh, inflate the tire with the with a patch on it like this to test it, you know, basically check it to see if it, uh, you know, leaks. Because this this will put some pressure on that hole. When it inflates. You see how, you see how it stretches the patch? give it an idea that should do it no leaks okay It's here all the way around. Okay. Now, this is the hard part. Because of these types of tires, they are, as you can see, there's a lot of space on them. Where's my valve stem? There's my valve stem. Start with a valve stem. I'm going to put that in first. Stem tight, and then at this point, before I go any further, I get a little small wire tie. This little small wire tie pull around the valve stem, it holds the valve stem in place. So, when you're uh, trying to inflate it, you're not pushing on the valve stem itself to inflate it and the valve stem pushes back into the tire. Especially on these type of tires, it is a pain in the butt. It really is. Okay, just snug the tube into place. Snug the tube down in behind the wheel so you don't get a pin flat. Put the valve stem back in. Uh, I guess it's called valve gut. Yeah, valve gut. Put the valve gut back in place and inflate it just a little bit to make the tube round. So when you put the bead of the tire on the wheel, it doesn't pinch the tube. As you can see, the tube's hanging out partially there. So what we're going to do, we're going to inflate it. There. That's enough. Just, just to make it round. That's all. Just enough to make it round. Now, here... It can get a little hairy when it comes to the bead. 
because, okay, you can get the bead on real easy. It goes on very, very easy, the bead. The problem is, is when you start inflating it, this bead likes to pop off. So as you can see, it goes on very easily. See? Because it's a four inch tire and a four inch wheel. It goes on very, very easily. Now, because it is on this side, I use WD 40 to lube it a little bit. So the bead will slip easy enough on the wheel when I start inflating it. And you have to inflate it a little bit at a time to double check both sides to make sure the bead's going to seat. Okay. How's the bead look? How's the bead look on the other side? Bead looks good. Bead looks good. Got the same rim all the way around. Yep. Bead looks good. Like, uh, like I said before, I pumped mine up to about 28 PSI. Uh, they're maxed out at 30. Uh, 25 seems a bit a little too low, too mushy. Especially when you're taking uh, corners on uh, asphalt. 28 seems to hold uh, the sidewalk stiffer. Okay, it's 28, 45, let it stabilize. Twenty-eight point three, close enough. And that's it for that. Put the valve cut back on. Now you can clean up the wheel if you choose to. At this time. Clean the excess WD-40 off. You definitely don't want the WD-40 on your tread. That's for sure. That's for sure. Okay, everything looks good over here. WD-40 over here, perfect. Perfect. There we go. And now, take this. Always want to put the disc side in first and just snug the nut up a little bit. Okay, put your chain on, make sure your axle is straight. There, let me get a new nut for this thing. Because I think it's, it's going to give me a problem later. As I'm not, I think it's partially stripped. It should have other Sturmy Archer nuts. Yeah, here we go. I don't know why Sturmy Archer wants to use a particular size. You can't use just a regular nut. Axle nut, you know, like a standard 15 millimeter. It's 15 millimeter nut, but the thread's completely different. So, there. Just snug it down. This is already set to uh, 24 point, uh, yeah, I think it's 24.3 newton meters I have it set to. There. That's close enough. Now get your clamp. 
you'll see how much this clamps down on this tire. This clamps down quite a bit. On this frame. See how it pulls it inward? That's what it takes on this type of a frame. There. Okay, we're good there. Yeah, I probably could. I don't know if they make a longer axle. I don't think they do. I don't think they make a longer axle for this thing. I don't think they really do. I don't think so. Not that I've ever known of. They've never made one. This is the longest axle that they make. Now that this is snug down, get my torque wrench. Twenty four point three Newton meters. It just seems that it's not tight enough, but that's what they call for. That's what it calls for, so it's exactly, let's double check it. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then, you can take your clamp out now. That's that, the clamp. Well, this can be a pain sometimes. Nah, there, it went right on. There we go. Okay, uh, now, oh, I need a wire tie too for the chain tensioner. There. Okay, good, good. Snip the excess off. That'll keep it from jumping. Uh, take your shifter rod with the little chain thingy on it. This thingy. Put it back in. It should slide all the way in, and then after you get it so far, just turn it clockwise. It threads into a bar in there for shifting. And once you get it all the way tight, I always back it off one full turn, you know, just to make sure it's uh, plenty of uh, movement. Nothing can it hinder its movement. And remember, you only loosen this outer nut here up just a little bit. So when you when you when you're uh, adjusting these gears, remember you're in third gear. So you want to have the play here. You want this play. You don't want it uh, tight. You just snug that down for now. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So 
So now, I'll pop it back over on the wheels. And test all three gears. Now we'll test the gears. First, test them up here. That's not quite shifting. So that means it's a little too tight. So, see how it tightened up? So, loosen this screw up a little bit. I don't know why it does that, but it just does. I don't know why it does that. It just does sometimes. Oh, wrong direction. There we go. Let's try that. Third, second, first. Okay, everything locks in. Now we'll turn it on and check it. First gear should be 17.8 miles per hour. Spot on. Second gear, 24 or 23.8, I think it is. Yeah. And third gear, 31.8. As you can see how nice and smooth it is. And that's how you change the tire once you get the shifting correct. Snug this nut down. And you're done. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps somebody.